Christ himself, who will sometime in the future come as the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. The blood of animals could only cover sin. The blood of Jesus takes it away. The seal of circumcision. Then in Genesis 17, God awakens Abram to seal the covenant. The seal, as we discussed in chapter 2, is the scar given as the testimony to the covenant. The scar will bear witness to the covenant. It will always remind God and, the, and Abram of their covenant responsibilities to each other. It was the guarantee of the covenant. Now the scar that sealed and testified to this covenant was circumcision. It was a token of the everlasting covenant. Abram would bear in his flesh the evidence that he had entered into the blood covenant with God through Christ. All of Abram's natural descendants will confirm their, accepting, confirm their accepting the covenant by taking the seal of circumcision on newborn males. In this way, the seal, the reminder, the testifier to the covenant was cast down. Now, the change of name. Then, according to the covenant ritual, God and Abram changed names. God, who is called YHWH in Hebrew, took the H out of his own name and he put it in Abram's name so Abram's name was changed to Abraham. Likewise, Sarah, Sarah's name was changed to Sarah. God took on Abram's name and became known as the God of Abraham. And now that the covenant is cut, they are known as friends. Abraham is to be known as the friend of God. That's in James 2 and 3. Abraham is now the covenant friend of God. And God has promised him a seed through Sarah, a descendant who will be a blessing to the whole world. He has also promised him a land of rest and blessing upon Abraham and his descendants. There's only one problem with all these promises. Abraham has no son through Sarah. Abraham had earlier given birth to Ishmael through Hagar, Sarah's handmaid. But the promised seed was to come through Sarah. Now he's 100 years old and Sarah is 90. He's infinite, and she has passed the age of childbearing. God is a little more polite in, this, in their condition. He says they're stricken with age. That's in Genesis 18 and 11. So we see if Abraham is going to have a son, it would definitely have to be a supernatural birth. Now Abraham has never had a covenant partner like God before. It takes him a while to get used to the level and magnitude of promises coming from such a partner. And that's a, a problem sometimes that we have. You know, we can't believe because we are in a blood covenant with God, with Jesus. Excuse me, praise God. With God. And sometimes we can't believe the magnitude of the things that he can do for us. And sometimes we ask for such little things because we're thinking, oh, that's all he's, he's going to do for me. You know, that's all he can do for me. Or sometimes we're not even really believing that God is going to do it for us. We're thinking, this is all that I can do. So if God doesn't do it, I can still do it. And then I can maybe claim later that, you know, it's from God. That's what a lot of us do. We don't really realize we go to as far as our money will take us. Or, you know, our finances will take us. The things that we have will take us. And we don't realize we're not going by God. We're still on ourselves. We're still going by ourselves. And God doesn't want us to go by ourselves. He wants us to go on Him. Praise God. He wants us to go past what we're thinking. If we're thinking, okay, Lord, I want, uh, I want to be a teacher. You know, I want to be a teacher and work in a classroom one day. He wants us to think higher. Lord, I want the school to be built for me. And then when they get it done, I want to have everything that I ever wanted in a school. And, you know, and I want to have the money and the finances to be able to run my school. And then I want to be put in it. You know, think higher. He wants to think of big things. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to keep thinking of little things. Mm -hmm. You know, he wants us to, to, to go higher. Go out of your box. Think higher. Think more than what you would ever think of yourself. Go past what you think. Oh, Lord, you know, I want to get this. I've seen this uh, car. When I was driving or when I was riding on the bus, I saw this car, and it was like you know, a couple of bucks, 300 bucks. I think I can afford that. You know, I hope, I pray that you bless me with that car. What God is saying, you can go down to the dealership, and if you're believing in me, you can walk away with a new car, a brand new car. Amen. But in our mind right now, all we can think of is, uh, I know that I can get this car, Lord. You just bless me with this car. Mm -hmm. This little two or three hundred dollar car that I saw by the side of the road, you know, uh, I'll be okay with that. But God is not wanting us to do that. He wants us to have faith so He can show Himself to us. Okay. I want to bless you with the car at the dealership. That's what I want to do. But if you want this, then go ahead. That's what you can have. We'll work that out. 
you know, but God wants us to go more. Dream higher. Yeah. Don't stay. Don't stay down little and just think of little things, you know. And, and he doesn't want us to forget the little things. I'm not saying don't ever say, okay, Lord, thanks for waking me up. Lord, thank you for, you know, for blessing me and directing my path and being my guide, you know, today. But he's wanting us to ask for bigger and better things yeah. for ourselves. He wants to bless us with bigger and better things. He doesn't want us to just have, uh, just barely get by, just barely have this, or, you know, just have, uh, oh, Lord, you know, you go to the food giveaway and they got clothes, you know, you know, bless me with that or whatever. You know, he wants to bless you with something that's not, that's firsthand. You're the first one to wear it. Mm -hmm. You're the first one to put your foot in this shoe. You're the first one to have this person, yeah. you know, wear it on your shoulder. He wants us to have nice things. He wants us to be blessed. He wants us to put our mind there. Mm -hmm. And that's what Abraham was thinking here. He said it was kind of hard for him to uh, get used to having a friend on such a high level. He said um, he had to get used to the level and the magnitude of the promises coming from God. Amen? Amen. It's not, it's not just everybody you cut covenant with that delivers in divine style. But Abraham finally comes to the persuasion that God is bound to the covenant and can't break it. So he has to deliver. Furthermore, since he is God, he is also capable of delivering. So a son is born to Abraham through Sarah, and he's called Isaac. God is living up to his part of the covenant, and that's in Genesis 21 and 5. This is Abraham's test of faith. But you recall Abraham slept through the covenant, and God did it all. Abraham had nothing to do with it. God is providing himself faithful. So now it's the time to test Abraham's faithfulness to the covenant. Did he really believe in his heart? Or was it just a mental aspect, an empty ritual he was going through? Remember that when a covenant is cut, each party completely surrenders himself in loving trust to the other party. He must be willing to give his total being, his total life, his total heart to the one he is in covenant with. It is a dying to oneself and surrender of yourself to the one you are in covenant with. The blood covenant is not a mere intellectual understanding between Abraham and God or you and God. And this is the test. There is only one way to find out Abraham's commitment to the covenant. The way is to test Abraham with that which is most dear to him, his only son. All over the world, men in blood covenant were willing to give that which was most dear to them. Devotees of pagan gods would offer their firstborn. This was common practice. Would Abraham do the same for his God? God is asking Abraham, do you love me as much as the heathens do their idols? Are you willing to surrender that which is most dear to you to prove that you love me? Or was it just easy talk? Have you really given me your heart, Abraham? Or was the covenant something you agreed to for reasons that were not pure? Abraham, take your son Isaac, your only son, whom you love more than anything in the world. Take Isaac to the land of Moriah and offer him to me as a burnt offering. Abraham, it's a three-day journey. When you get there, I'll point out the mountain you are to offer to my son. That's in Genesis 22, 1 to 2. Well, this is a test, a tough test for Abraham, even though offering the firstborn was common practice because Abraham is 100 years old, and all the promises God gave depended solely on him having a son. And at the age of 100, Abraham probably thinks there's not much hope of having another son. After all, Abraham reasons God is still God is still tired for the miracle. Oh, he's still tired for the miracle with Isaac that took him 25 years. And by the time another 25 years goes along, Abraham figures he'll surely be too old for God to do anything with. I'm sure these thoughts flash through Abraham's mind. I know they would have mine, but Romans 4:20 says Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. For a Middle Easterner like Abraham to offer his only son's life was a far greater sacrifice than offering his own life. If God would have asked Abraham, Abraham to offer himself a tired, worn-out man of a hundred, it would have not been a true test of Abraham's faithfulness to the covenant. But for Abraham to offer his only son and once again become childless at such an old age, this is the ultimate sacrifice. You see, in the Middle Eastern mind, to die without a son was the most terrible thing in life. Your whole life would be considered a failure. The saying in those days was, Heaven awaits not one who is destitute of a son. So in offering his only son, Abraham will prove in the most supreme way that he loved God and will be faithful to the covenant. 
God was not asking Abraham to do anything others would not do for their pagan God. Abraham offers Isaac. Abraham arrives early the next morning to begin his three days journey toward a mountain at a city called Salem, later to be called Jerusalem. Isaac and his two servants go with him. For the three day journey to the mountaintop, praise God. Praise in the Abraham's Lord. Mind, Isaac is as good as dead. This journey is described in Genesis 22. On the third day of the journey, God points out Mount Moriah, where Isaac is to be sacrificed. Abraham then turns to the servant and says, Stay here with the donkeys, and the lad and I will travel yonder and worship, and then come right back. Then Abraham places the wood for the burnt offering upon Isaac's shoulders, and the two of them go on together. Although I can't prove it in the scripture, I believe that this is time Isaac is a young man in his early 30s, probably 33. The Jewish age of maturity was 30. Isaac didn't marry until he was 40 and had no children until he was 60. So even at 33, he would be considered a young man. So Isaac had three years of manhood before he was offered as a sacrifice. Wow. On the way to the top of Mount Moriah, Isaac turns to Abraham and says, Father, we have the wood and flint to make the fire, but where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Abraham replies, God will provide himself the lamb for the burnt offering. From the statement, we realize that Abraham believes God will provide a substitute sacrifice on his behalf. Hebrews 11 and 19 tells us Abraham believed that even if God did take Isaac, he would resurrect him to be firstborn of the covenant children God promised Abraham. Abraham also believed he would have many children thereafter through the seed of Isaac. So Abraham builds the altar and places Isaac on it. Just as he is about to make the sacrifice and take his own son's life, God steps in and says, Abraham, you've proven your faithfulness to the covenant. Take this ram I have provided and offer him in the place of your son. I will accept him as a substitute sacrifice in our covenant. Abraham offered up the ram and named the mountain the Lord will provide, and it is said on the mountain, <clears throat> on this on this mountain, the sacrifice shall be provided. It will be seen. <clears throat> the regards of the he will be seen. Uh, the bride is chosen. Seven years, seven years later, after the substitute sacrifice is made, Elizer, Abraham's servant, seeks out a bride for Isaac. He finds Rebecca and brings her out of slavery to sinful idol worship in the city of Haran and brings her into the promised land to begin a new life with Isaac. So God in rebuke, so God cut covenant with Abraham. Satan tried to devour the acceptable sacrifice before the covenant could be completed, and God had to put Abraham to sleep to keep him from interfering. Now, if Abraham tried to approach God on his own and help him out, there could be no covenant made. It was all God's doing, strictly an act of grace on his behalf. Christ, the pre-existing, eternal Son of God, took Abraham's place in the covenant ceremony. This was necessary because only God could enter into the covenant with God. Abraham did nothing, nothing but believe. Christ stood in for Abraham and walked in his place, representing him in the covenant. And the covenant was sealed by circumcision. Abraham became Abram, became Abraham, the friend of God, and God became the God of Abraham. And Abraham believed God because of his belief. God counted him as righteous. Amen. Okay. So we're just going to ask a few questions. Okay. <coughs> Do you want to remember what uh, what it was that Abraham believed in the covenant? When he was taking Isaac up the mountain, what was it that he said he was believing? The faithfulness, faithfulness to the covenant. Uh, his God tested him in faithfulness. Yeah, he was testing him. But what was he believing when he was taking his son up there to get ready to sacrifice him? Was he believing for sure this is what God was going to do? That God will provide mother. That's right. Amen. Oh, no, I was thinking about uh, you know, uh, 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 trusting God. Mm -hmm. He trusted. You said he was a test. I was test. <laughs> this is it. Did he, he, Abraham, did uh, Abraham trust God? Yes, he was trusting God to believe or to provide, you know, uh -huh. uh, a sacrifice. Or if uh -huh. he did have to actually kill his son, that God would resurrect him. Yeah, that's right. That. that's right. He was believing that, you know, because God had made a promise to him mm -hmm. that his son was going to be the father of many nations. So if he was sacrificing him, I'm going to do it. 
that you said this, so I'm going to believe that your word is still going to be true. What you mm -hmm. said, no matter what happens to my son today, mm -hmm. that it's still going to happen. And you said this son, this son is going to be the father of the nation. So I'm going to still believe you. So I'm going to do this, you know, I'm going to believe you. What about the prayer when you say, oh, you told us, God, about when we ask God for things, well, we ask Him for wisdom, and then, okay, more than wisdom, we ask Him to show us signs like where we can see. Okay, uh, you know what? The Lord has been dealing with, with me about that particular thing which you just said. You know, a lot of times uh, we're looking for signs. Like when we come up for prayer or something, we're looking for a sign. We're looking for something to really happen or uh, whether for the world to shake or for, you know, for us to have a trembling in our body or the yeah. heat or the cold or something or for our eyes to flutter. We're looking for something to be happening. Yeah. And we're so busy looking at what some kind of thing, for some kind of thing to happen, God has already been doing what he said he's going to do. It's done. Most times when people come up for prayer, he's already said it's done. It's done before you even came mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that person's belief, because you believe that God said that whatever I, I want or whatever, you know, I'm going through, if I'm coming to you, and when you're stepping up, you're walking, you're walking in faith, believing that, you know, God said that he's going to help me with my situation, and I'm already believing. That's why I got on my feet. That's why I'm walking up here to prayer. I'm already believing. And because you already believe, God is already doing it for you because you already believe. Nobody has to touch you. Nobody has to blow on you. Nobody has to do nothing to you. We don't yeah. have to even pray for you just because you already believe that you were walking up. You already believe God. So don't be looking for signs and wonders because we get caught up in that. Yeah. We get caught up in saying, well, you know what? They prayed for me, but I really didn't feel anything. I didn't feel, you know, you know, I didn't have what about that. Feeling? I'm complaining in the spirit like everybody else did. Or, you know, yeah. I'm looking for something like that. that was, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen, but don't be looking for signs and, and wonders. Yeah. For God, just know that you know, Lord, you said, you said it. He's not a liar. Yeah. He's not gonna do all this. He's not gonna come down from heaven, from his from his love, wonderful, wonderful, comfortable place to come down here and to die for us, to get spit on, you know, to get you know cut and bruised. And I'm not saying that little stuff talked about spit on, you know, and then hung on a cross. He's not gonna do all that and not help us. He went through all that. Amen. 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 What if he would have said some words? Think angels would have came and I'm going to tell you. He didn't say any words. He didn't complain. He didn't do any of that because he wants to let you know he's doing it because he wants to do it. Now, if he complains, if somebody complains, what does that mean? I don't want to do it all, man. I don't even want to do this. Why did God even choose me? Why did he even tell me to come here and do this? Why? You know? Complaining yeah. because you don't want to do it. He didn't say a word because he wants to do it. Yeah. It was hard. It hurt him. He was in a lot of pain. But he took it because he wanted us to have a better life. He wanted us to come up there and be with him in glory, in a better thing, to have better things, not have to worry about sorrows and troubles and worries that we have in this world. He didn't want us to have none of that. He knows we were going to go through it, because he did. Yeah. He said everything that we've been going through, that we've been tempted on, he has too, but without sin. He had to be that perfect sacrifice for us, mm -hmm. and he was. He wasn't going to stop. He wasn't going to kind of uh, let it go and say, well, you know, uh, I know God will forgive me, but, you know, we're going to skip this part. Let's just go to the next part. He wasn't going to complain about anything. He didn't deserve anything that happened to him, but he took it for us. Thank you, Jesus. He didn't deserve nothing. He didn't deserve it. Praise God. And a Amen. lot of us, you know, we go and we do things and we say things and we mean to people and we laugh. As we grow up, you know, we just learn to do that. To laugh sometimes at people's hurt and pains and calamity and things they go through. And we grow up thinking, you know, and then, you know, as we get older, you know, we don't laugh so much, but sometimes, so, you know, <laughs> you know, I was a little funny, you know, we still laugh at someone's hurt and someone's pain. They have shows on TV now that is just showing you somebody getting hurt, and then people just laugh at it. A couple of popular shows that are just so funny. It's just you can sit in your video of somebody getting hurt and they're making oh, big yeah. money and that's just so funny. Right. And you just laugh. Mm -hmm. And then the show probably gets But yeah, 
and you know, we just laugh at people turn to taste. Is that we have got to the point to where you know we're laughing at uh, things that are hurtful. And, yeah, it's just our minds have we have been programmed to just uh, laugh at laugh at people turn to pain. So when you see it, you kind of give up or you kind of laugh when you see people hurt yeah. instead of saying, "Wow." Right here, this is you know. Thank that, mother, because it's not good to have any spirit. Because we get there and we get stuck and we get caught up and then we start living that way. And then later on, you know, you're at church and you're trying to get over that, you know, of uh, all those things. Because, you know, we just got caught up in the world and start living the world's life instead of living the life that God will have for us to live. And that's what we Amen. Rebel. So let's not. Rebel. Look at signs and wonders. Were there any more questions? I was saying, like, like in school, I was going to school too. A lot of boys, bullies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Some kids have absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. good like that. Yeah. Because they don't know they have bullies. I didn't know it either. They didn't know how special they were. Right. I mean, from the beginning, they were special. Right. But, this, but uh, I was a parent and teacher. But, uh, but like, I was. Church when I was growing up, yeah. I didn't know how important I was. Yeah. And I listened to all that for yeah. yeah. That's the awful feeling. But we have more churches than Yeah. Praise God. You know, I was thinking about that kids now, you know. Mm-hmm. And so they, you know, so they come out and do bullying. They can say to themselves, I'm not taking them. I am someone to God. I am. That's right. And he made me. He didn't make no mistakes. And God don't make no mistakes. But I didn't know that. Yeah. See, see what happens with Yeah, it's very hard. We have to be careful as we're raising kids. Whenever we're coming into contact with kids, you know, we have to make sure that we are talking to them and letting them know, you know, it's not okay to bully someone or to talk mean about yeah. someone because we don't know, you know, uh, there are people who will talk about someone and they'll think it's funny. Yeah. They don't care if the person is crying or being hurt. They don't even laugh at that. Look, how, look at them. Look at them being, uh, you know, crying, you know. And, yeah. you know, they just, you know, just talk more uh, about them, about their situation, about their body, about their hair, about their teeth, uh-huh. about them, period, so yeah. that, you know, anything so that all the people, all their friends can say, Stop. oh, man, you're so funny and that's so right, you know, but they don't realize what they're doing to this person. I mean, I, uh, I think my, my husband and I had read uh, on the news or saw on a TV show where the people were talking about a girl and didn't even care. I said, I don't care. Let her cry. Let her do this or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then the next day, the girl is killing herself because, yeah. you know, she got hurt so bad. And it's been a nationwide. Yeah, because, see, we got to be careful. So you know, uh-huh. yeah, what we're saying to people, you don't know what they are. That's why we got to we gotta uh, live for Jesus and do what God is wanting us to do. But you see, they got food. They put it in our home. On their face. He's going to sit right in front of Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I told my brother. Oh, my Put your information out there. Everybody. Mama, they do. They talk about their whole lives yeah. on there. A lot of them do. Yeah. We see it a lot. And they just do. And you can get food for what you say now. Yeah. On the TV, I own that real food. You have to be very careful. Yeah, a lot of people are on there and they're not really caring, you know, what they say to people because they're thinking, you know, you're here and I'm maybe, you know, in another country, so I can just say whatever I want to you or whatever, comment to you any kind of way I want to, and they're still not caring about that person's feelings. They're just trying to, I can be mean, mean to you as I want to. You know, you can't get me. You can't touch me. You know, all you can do is, you know, unfriend me on Facebook or something. You know, I can do whatever I want. So. I don't need to be careful. So they just start, you know, you start at home. Go Let them know, you know, get them ready for that. You know, that that bullying is gone. But don't, don't worry, tell them, don't worry about it. You know, there's a way you can tease with people without hurting people. You can make fun of people. Yeah. I mean, but you, and you do it in a nice way. Yeah. You know, do it in a cruel way. You know, yeah. And they're really trying to get you. Get you. Yeah. Get you. Some people are trying to hurt yeah, you. Yeah, they're inside they're, they're, they're hurting a whole lot. So uh-huh. They don't want to hurt you. Yeah. Yeah, them. They're hurting. Yeah. And see, if, you know, to try to hurt as many people as they can. You know, because even when uh, we had heard um, another story on Facebook where uh, a girl had, um, she had got a, a, one of the sexual diseases and she was trying to give it to everybody. And she didn't care. Oh, she was yeah. a very pretty girl and she was hurt because she got it. Uh-huh. So she was trying to give it to yeah. everybody mm-hmm. that she could. 
So it's like when people get hurt, you know, they want to hurt someone else. Yeah, that's true. They're that's trying to true. hurt someone else. So when people are hurting someone, yeah. instead of us seeing the person that's hurting someone, mm -hmm. we got to realize, hey, they're going through something. Yeah, something is wrong. Yeah. And start praying for them, Lord, help them, whatever they're going to take away that pain mm -hmm. or the bitterness that's in their heart so they can stop hurting. Yeah. Heal them. So it hurts so people. people. It hurts people. Mm-hmm. It's just like saying, even though know, it's not, not in a close thing you want to say, but it's just like saying, a person, okay, a person with AIDS, without AIDS, you know, the disease can never go away, even if you're immune to shock. It's just like saying, when God said, Lord, bless me with the Holy Spirit, that when you forgive him, he really, yeah. even go. No, if he really, really see God, and he really gets saved, the Holy Ghost, anybody can get healed. Amen. Yeah. yeah. God is all things. Yeah. There's nothing, nothing that he can't do. Uh, nothing that he can't do. Amen. And you see him now, they don't take it in medicine. Amen. Praise God. That they ain't tricky God in Christ, you know. Like my mama used to be, she didn't uh, go to the doctors or nothing until my brother kept getting her, you know, Amen. trouble. <laughs> Amen. If I wanted to say, I'm sorry, this one is so scared. Um, when you said, you know, I was letting you know about the people who are hurting, they do hurt, but if you think about it, if you're happy, you know, you want to make somebody else happy. Mm -hmm. If you're happy, you want to spread your happiness. Hey, how about you? What are you doing today? You're a lot. Let's come to my house and sit up by the TV and just stop. You know, if you're happy, you're going to make somebody else happy. Yeah. So if you're hurting inside, no matter how big or little it is, mm -hmm. you're going to want someone else to hurt too. Yeah. Because why am I the only one hurting? Yeah. Misery loves company. Amen. Praise God. Brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I told you I'm talking about that I heard it. Uh, I see a lot of people. I don't, I don't go on Facebook, but sometimes I do have people going in my friends. He, he's like a pastor, like a pastor assistant. He can tell me things that having people are Christian. They talk about people bad on Facebook, but they just, and they put be Christian and they send that lying. But they're on Facebook talking about people like dogs and cat like what a like a big old thing going on. Amen. And he told me some things that right now because he moving back to LA, so I just find out about that. So the girls on the job, because the dyke was on the on the thing talking talking about she's a Christian, trying to get her to turn on him. So he told her, if you want to go that way, it's up to you. But he said, I'm gonna follow God for so that's go do what I gotta do. And stay with the Lord. So he told her, You can make your choice. So what he did, she didn't want to go her way. He said, You know what? Don't get caught up in human sin. So he kind of like real, real detective God. So he got that shell real tight on him. So he was telling me about that Christian, they need to start rising up too. And how people say, Oh, I'm God, give myself to the Lord. And he say, and God can heal the gays and the, and the, and the dice. He can hear all that, but he said, Heaven don't believe on Facebook. They think it's they, their own little world. Yeah. And he tell, and he tell some of the Christians, if y'all really Christian going to church, why you got to talk about somebody on Facebook mm -hmm. or MySpace? When you talk about yourself, all you do is making us That's strong. What you're making them. Mm -hmm. Making us stronger and more believe in God. Y'all going to be the last one being in the <laughs> church, but y'all ain't talking about it. So we had to talk about it. You know we talk about God or something on, on yeah, the phone. So we always talk about certain things. So I be telling people, y'all gotta watch what y'all do for this. Cause, uh, like I told you, it's the end of days. Yes, it is. And they gotta realize San Bernardino, everywhere you go, is nothing but rocks. If God shot it down, he blocking everything. So it's we expect where to go. Way to make out of it. But people who go on Facebook, you know, it's for kids, not for adults. Don't be bringing up it's childish. I know, no, that's what I'm saying. Like the they don't know. Down, they don't know. That's why they say God's going back straight. Okay. So, I've been, I've been out of the way. Praise God. Okay, we're going to put off. Praise God. Um, we're going to pray. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. We are all welcome to stay in the blood covenant, and it's our choice to get out. If we don't want to be in covenant with him, it's our choice to get out. So hopefully that we won't get out, we will um, draw closer to him. Seek his face for him. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Get in his presence. Praise God. Praise God. He wants to be close to him. Praise God. Um, that's it. Amen. Praise God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you and praise for this lesson. 
Lord, let us keep it close to our hearts, Father, to remember our covenant with you, Father, that we stay in agreement with you, Lord, in all things, Lord Jesus. We seek your faith, Father, that we do your will, Lord Jesus, that our days are guided by you, Lord, and not ourselves, Father, in the name of Jesus.